Last year, I made two videos about the ads and trailers at the beginning of Toy Story 1 and 2's VHS tapes. I didn't actually talk about the movies, because why would I do that? We're not gonna watch the whole thing, we just wanna see all the commercials at the beginning. What? Anyway, people really liked those videos. However, Toy Story 3 never got a VHS tape, so the only way I feel I could top this is if I make a video about a bunch of tapes. So, welcome one and all to the VHS Variety Hour. Today, I've picked out a selection of VHS tapes, and what I'm gonna do is stick them in this here VCR and watch the ads that show up at the beginning of all these tapes and make various sarcastic comments about them, as well as give some critique because this video is fair use, which is to say that the footage used in this video isn't copyright infringement, and I don't need permission, nor do I need to pay royalties, nor do I need to adhere to what this text says. Get fucked, FBI. Oh, also, I got a new VCR, as in I bought a VCR, within the year i didn't get a new one because no one's making these things anymore basically i put an old dirty tape in the old vcr and the tape gave the vcr a disease and by dirty tape i mean that literally i didn't put porn in it no matter what tape i put in after that moment nothing would come on the screen except for a request to use a cleaning cassette hey guess what i don't have so much like a dog i did the moral thing and i didn't buy it the medicine it needed i instead put it down and replaced it with a new one i am going to put you down Brain disease. It was only $6 though, so I didn't really care. Actually, funny story, when I tried recording the VHS tapes for use in this video, I thought I did the exact same thing when I put in the Lilo and Stitch tape, but luckily it was fixed with some verbal and physical abuse. I also let it play in the corner for an hour or so. You know, like a dog. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm triggering all of YouTube's blacklist video words here. Hey, wait, I just realized I've been speaking as though you know what a VHS or VCR is. If I've learned anything from boomers, I know that anyone born after 2000 doesn't know how to use outdated technology. So let me be the one to educate you peasants. You know, the, the, the fucking zoomer. Bruh. Imagine owning an NFT. <laughs> Only instead of owning digital art that's easy to get otherwise, you own a movie that's only slightly harder to get otherwise. And it's also physical and contained in this box of tape and magic. Also, the footage is in a four by three ratio because it's old and meant for TVs that look like this. That was probably the worst explanation of VHS tapes in history. You know, despite this video being about an outdated media format from decades ago, the real thing that's gonna date this video is that NFT thing. All right, enough horsing around. This is serious business. I have a bunch of VHS tapes to go over. Our lineup includes The Little Mermaid, Aladdin, The Lion King, Hercules and Lilo and Stitch. If you're wondering why I chose these, it's because these were the Disney animated movies I watched when I was a snot-nosed bedwetting little shit. On VHS tapes. There are more movies I watched, but those are under different categories. Some of those are Pixar movies and some of those are Rick Moranis shrink movies. So I'm just going to cover these today so I can at least have some consistency. Don't worry, I'll probably come back to this topic in another year and or if I need filler. Our first tape tonight is for The Little Mermaid. Not just any Little Mermaid, though. It's a 1998 VHS release of The Little Mermaid. Yeah, okay, so you know that dumb forced scarcity shit that Nintendo does with their games and systems to make them more valuable? Disney pretty much did the same thing with their movies back in the day. Now's the time for your family to discover the adventures of Basil and Toby in Disney's The Great Mouse Detective. Add this classic to your video collection today before it disappears. After April, Disney will stop selling The Great Mouse Detective on video. Buy now while supplies last. Yeah, parents, don't forget to buy the Great Mouse Detective before it disappears. I guarantee it'll change your child's life. Mm. This better not awaken anything in me. Remember how I freaked out about how long it took Bambi to get re-released on VHS and Toy Story 1's VHS tape? One of the most treasured animated classics ever is finally being released on video for a whole new generation to enjoy. Wait, hold it. So, there's never a home release of Bambi before 1997? Dude, that movie came out in 1942. That's a pretty long time to wait for that particular movie to re-release again. Well, at the time, I didn't know about how anal Disney was about re-releasing their old movies back then. Back in the day, Disney only wanted their movies to be seen in theaters once every five or ten years, mainly so their movies would remain profitable. However, once home media started taking off, Disney essentially drip-fed people their movies on VHS by only making certain movies available for a limited time and in limited 
limited quantities. So people would still hold the movies in high value and see them in theaters when they were re-released. Or if there was another VHS coming out, they'd flock to buy them so they don't miss out. This is where the Disney Vault thing came from. This is the hellhole that the movies are threatened to be put back into if you don't buy their VHSs in time. Eventually, during the Disney Renaissance that started with The Little Mermaid, their movies were released on home video shortly after they were in theaters. Instead of whatever time Disney decides is enough. Make The Little Mermaid part of your world for only $23.99 with mail-in refund. Again, the model here was to convince parents to buy them for their children as soon as possible before they disappear forever. But hurry, it's only available for a limited time. So I have to go and get it right now. Or, you know, five to ten years, but that's pretty much forever give or take like three years maybe. After a while, Disney introduced a new line of VHS re-releases that followed the previous Disney Classics branding entitled Disney Masterpieces. Very narcissistic. The Bambi advertisement we looked at in Toy Story 1 was part of this masterpiece line. And that's why looking back, this advertisement is so heavily manipulative. Walt Disney has given us the greatest movies ever made, each with its own special memories. Our favorite moments we want to collect and share with our children. One of the most treasured animated classics ever is finally being released on video for a whole new generation to enjoy. <laughs> the adventure that captures everyone's imagination. For a limited time, you can give your children memories they'll have forever. <laughs> of Walt Disney's timeless classic, Bambi. Enjoy it again for the very first time. Look well, at these children enjoying Bambi. You want these children to be yours, right, parents? Buy our movie. Don't miss out on the opportunity of a lifetime. That is seeing your kids react to the mom dying, you sadistic fuck. After finding out all of this information, I don't really know why in the ad they say, enjoy it again for the very first time, considering uh, this isn't even the first time that it was released on VHS. There was also one in 1989, but whatever. I guess it was the first time for a bunch of people, so it was close enough, I guess. Hey, look at the thing that the Bambi 1989 tape is advertising. The Little Mermaid, coming to theaters this holiday season. It's the thing I'm supposed to be talking about, except... Uh, not yet. Anyway, now, years after all that hoopla, VHS tapes have pretty much lost all of their value unless you're a desperate eBay seller. The only reason this is important to know here is because these different releases of movies on VHS also result in different beginnings. The first release of The Little Mermaid under the aforementioned Disney Classics line doesn't have any ads at all. It just starts right up. That may have been convenient 30 years ago, but now I want some fucking ads, goddammit! Luckily, the 1998 masterpiece version I have, otherwise known as the fully restored special edition has a selection of ads for me to enjoy. World peace has been achieved. Special edition. Yeah, are there more rings in the water or something? Okay, so this VHS tape starts with a couple of fish watching the- Oh god, what the fuck is that? <clears throat> uh, so, uh, yeah, they're- they're watching- they're watching the movie. Uh, already. Um... Yeah. This tape does something different than the Toy Story tapes, as well as many others. Many tapes just open with ads going one after the other. This one does the same thing. Only here we have Jody Benson and dated CGI fish. Hey! It's Jody Benson, the voice of Ariel and the Little Mermaid. Thank you so much, Fishy, for saying that in such a natural and off-the-cuff way. Hi, Jody. Hi, Gil. Hi, Phil. What a voice. With my body and her voice, we could really go places. <laughs> the fuck is that supposed to mean? The best way I can interpret that is the fish thinks it looks hot, and if he had her voice, he'd be able to have all of the fish. Or something, I don't know. Jody Benson then starts talking to the fish about all the cool movies she's gonna show us, and the only thing I can imagine is how crazy she'd look to someone else walking into the room. You know, because she's talking to a fishbowl about movies that weren't even out yet. Then again, though, the fish can talk, so I'm now more concerned that in this world fish look like that. I mean, seriously though, it's not like all CGI back then looks this dated. So my best guess as to why this looks so awful is because they probably didn't think anyone would care. You know, this is just the opening to a VHS tape that most normal people would uh, <coughs> skip. So maybe the CGI artist didn't think it was top priority to give the fish any emotion 
or appeal. Imagine being a CGI artist and your assignment is to animate a couple of fish talking to the voice actress of Ariel. But the only thing they end up doing is shove advertisements in your face. They probably did this in CGI so they wouldn't have to waste time on 2D animating it, which would take uh, more time probably. And they probably didn't make the CGI better because again, who cares? Anyway, the first movie introduced is Mulan. Mulan? Yeah, the incredible adventure of a girl who impersonates a soldier to save her family and ultimately her whole country. Thank you for saying that. Now I don't have to be the one to explain it. Actually, the part of the movie they show as the preview is the scene where she goes behind her parents' back and becomes a soldier, which makes sense on paper. It is one of the best parts of the movie. It's just that I don't think many who watched this preview really got the experience the creators of the movie most likely intended, considering it lacks the context of everything that comes before. After a while, we start seeing flashes of other things that happen because of Mulan, like the avalanche, while the Emperor says most of the stuff he says in the finale of the movie. Only it's slightly different for some reason. I've heard a great deal about you, Fa Mulan. You stole your father's armor, ran away from home. I've heard a great deal about you. Mulan, you took your father's armor, yeah. ran away from home, impersonated a soldier, deceived your commanding officer, dishonored the Chinese army, destroyed my palace, impersonated a soldier, endangered the lives of thousands of men, and destroyed my palace. And you have saved us all. But soon the world will know the great things you have done. And that's not even the only time they take a bit from the actual movie and change it for the trailer. The greatest gift and honor is having you for a daughter. This one's late, but I'll bet that when it blooms, it will be the most beautiful of all. Why do trailers always do that? Oh yeah, they also spoil the whole movie in the trailer. I forgot to mention that. Why do trailers always do- I mean, it doesn't spoil every beat, but the Emperor is talking to Mulan and saying what a wonderful warrior she is after we have the context that she impersonated a soldier. Impersonated a soldier. As everyone bows to her. But soon the world will know the great things you have done. If that isn't at least spoiling the ending, then I don't know what is. Whew, one miss with that sword and we're sushi. What the hell are you talking about? What, you think the sword's gonna come out of the TV and face through your fishbowl and slice you up? Grow up, pussy. Sorry, it's just I'm so confused as to what he meant by that. Did he say that because Mulan's Chinese or something? I hope not. Sushi's Japanese. Anyway, after the fish mentions how Mulan could, could become, become a big, big hero, hero, completely ignoring the fact that it was shown in the fucking trailer, Jodie Benson, with her amazing segue skills, transitions that into talking about tiny heroes. And then we get a teaser for A Bug's Life. But here at Disney, some of our biggest heroes are actually very tiny. Like our friends in another Disney film coming this year, A Bug's Life. Yeah, Disney film. Not Pixar. Not even Disney Pixar. We made this film, bitches. An epic film of miniature proportions, with stars just as cute as a bug's ear. What the hell are you going on about? Is that a phrase anyone has said ever? Oh my god, it is. Why? I'm pretty sure most people find bugs scary and find ears gross. I was combining that result in anything other than Hellspawn for people. Anyway, the teaser itself is just some bugs standing on a leaf before they all die because of Heimlich committing mass manslaughter during an epic leaf mukbang. There's also words to say the same thing Jody Benson says. An epic film of miniature proportions. That was the whole teaser. Fun fact, A Bug's Life is a movie with both Kevin Spacey and John Lasseter in the credits. Have fun trying to get that out of your head next time you watch this. Well, it really is a small world after all. That's one of Disney's wonderful songs. And if you love Disney music, there's nothing like melody time. You're going to use everything they say to advertise something, aren't you? I mean, I guess that's the point of this opening bit. But I like to think that Jody Benson does this outside of this VHS tape too because it's funny. Like someone mentions how the ice cubes haven't quite frozen yet and she's like, speaking of frozen, that's the title of one of Disney's hit animated films. 
Frozen. Available now. Anyway, her talking about It's a Small World transitions into the VHS release of Melody Time. Hey, look, evidence of that stupid force scarcity thing I was talking about earlier. Disney is now opening up its vault. I don't have much to say about this. I just want to point out how homicidal these piano notes are, because goddamn. And speaking of classic Disney, the biggest star of all, Mickey Mouse, has an exciting new video coming out called The Spirit of Mickey, a collection of your favorite Mickey Mouse animated shorts. Oh boy, I hope they include this one. 70 years ago, a man named Walt created a mouse named Mickey, and a legend was born. Oh my god, they said a legend is born. That's the thing people in the comments say on YouTubers' first videos. Introducing Disney's The Spirit of Mickey. All aboard! The Spirit of Mickey is a train conductor telling people to get on the train. In a collection that's never before been released. Why are the typewriter sounds from the corn so much more high quality audio wise than everything else? It's the Spirit of Mickey, available for you to own July 14th. Boy, that Mickey is a star all over the world. I mean, yeah, technically, but nothing about the world was said in the ad, so why did you feel the need to say that? Anyway, what's next? Pocahontas, Journey to a New World. What the fuck? Oh, I get the comment the fish made now, because that comment is vaguely related to the segue to talking about the Pocahontas sequel. Boy, that Mickey is a star all over the world. How about hopping aboard with me as Pocahontas set sail for England? Also, Pocahontas sequel? Why is Pocahontas a movie that Disney chose to make a sequel out of? Most Disney sequels are shit while the originals are good, but the original movie is already shit in this case. So you didn't need another movie to taint the franchise. I like how even in the VHS quality, you can tell how much of a downgrade the animation is from the original. Or how even the other movie clips and trailers here in this VHS tape. I mean, at least it looks better than the fish, I guess. Two years ago, Pocahontas took us on a breathtaking adventure in a Disney motion picture classic. Yeah, okay, keep telling yourself that. As Pocahontas and her friends embark on a fun-filled adventure in the new world of England, where they'll meet new friends and fight for the future of her people. Oh man, you make that sound so fun. Fun-filled adventure. Hey, that raccoon isn't anthropomorphic enough to do that, lady. I like this dance because it looks so awkward. Touching hands and rotating. Try that on your next homecoming, kids. I love Pocahontas. Well, that was your first mistake. If you love romance and adventure, wait till you see Lady and the Tramp coming to video this fall. My eyes are always moist at the end of the Lady and the Tramp. Are you kidding? Your eyes are moist at the beginning, too. I would have thought they'd make a joke about how their fish and their eyes are always moist, but... Oh well. Hey, this is a good time to let you know that I like Lady and the Tramp, and I also really want to do a video about the movie, and also it's fucking dog shit remake. But, you know, I kind of have to finish this video first, and when the Lady and the Tramp video does come out, it'll probably get copyright claims, so I'll have to spend two billion years fighting those. But at least I can talk about this movie a bit now. She was a purebred beauty. He was a rough and tumble mutt. I like the way he said that. You can hear him smiling when he says that. He was a rough and tumble mutt. I feel like this narrator likes dogs. Actually, wait, hold on. Shouldn't Jody be the one narrating considering she's also talking before and after them? But when they got together, it could only lead to one thing. A Disney adventure unlike any other. I mean, I wouldn't consider Lady and the Tramp to be that adventurous. At least the way you're describing it. The adventure in this movie is more so just a sightseeing tour. And now, you can share this magical motion picture with your entire family. Oh, there's the Disney guilt trip again. Don't forget, parents, buy this amazing masterpiece. Otherwise, your kids may not learn what love is. Critics have called it one of Disney's most enduring classics. Uh, enduring is a very strange word to use there. It's just similar enough to endearing to make me think that it's a mistake, but enduring does technically work there. It just doesn't work as well. One of Walt Disney's greatest classics. Critics have called it one of Disney's most enduring classics. And now, you can share this magical motion picture with your entire family. Walt Disney's masterpiece. Pure Disney magic. All right, Disney. don't break an arm jerking yourself off. There isn't even anything magical about Lady and the Tramp. Unless you consider, like, the animals talking to be 
the magic part, but I'm pretty sure you're supposed to interpret that as them just barking and we can understand what they're saying. I guess you mean it's magic that they made a good movie. I guess Disney's magic is really running the fuck out, huh? Uh, I was gonna put some, like, actual, like, movies here, but Disney Plus just works better. Wow, Gil. I had a cousin who swam at that pond. Oh. Wait, it was just an excuse to talk about their cruise ship line. Pure Disney magic. How would you like to see what happens when you take a little Disney magic and just add water? Uh, you should get the movie that y you're in, right? Wow, Gil. I had a cousin who swam at that pond. That's not a pond, you dumbass. It's magic. The new Disney magic. Oh man, I hope the cruise also includes the creepy CGI Goofy and Mickey clouds to sexually caress the ship. The first ship built by the dream makers at Disney, and there's no other ship like it on Earth. Okay, maybe dial the hype back a bit. It's a fucking cruise ship, not a cure for AIDS. I like how the ship seems to stay in tropical climates. You don't want to kill all the children in Disney's... I accidentally cut off the joke I was making here when editing the audio. It was a joke about how they probably didn't want a Titanic 2 attraction. I'm just gonna keep it cut off though because I think it's funnier. And on your magical stopover in Castaway Key, Disney's private island in the Bahamas. Jesus Christ, Disney had a private island in the middle of the ocean. Imagine what kind of illegal shit went down there. I like the Sebastian puppet. I don't know why. Maybe I relate to it. There's nearly a whole deck with activities just for kids. Yeah, just for kids. Who needs parental supervision anyway? And incredible dining experiences at the three theme restaurants. I wonder if they have a fish food buffet. Bitch, you fish food. Where you can kick back, relax, and have the time of your life. Yeah, Saturday is the day I like to flip back, relax, and just enjoy myself. You know, I think this shot perfectly illustrates the terribleness of the CGI. Just seems like a 3D fish model made in a day doing the most bare minimum movements possible. Not that I like really care. <laughs> like I said, I don't think VHS advertisement segues are the things Disney focused their CGI efforts on. But regardless, it doesn't change how shitty these things look anyway. And that's it. After that, she introduces the movie by by saying all the characters' names. And now it's time for our big feature, Disney's The Little Mermaid, starring Ariel, King Triton, Ursula, Sebastian, Scuttle, and of course, Little Flounder. Yeah, the shrimp. What the hell? Am I sensing some fish drama here? I like how in this shot you can see that the CGI fish have been replaced with real fish. It's just these shots though. <laughs> I guess they forgot. Apparently, much like Toy Story's VHS tape, there is one more ad in here about some Disney TV show stuff. But fun fact, I'm Canadian, and those ads aren't on my tape, so I refuse to talk about them out of principle and patriotism. That line's probably gonna date this video, but you know this. Oh, also, while I'm on the topic of amending other VHS videos, I'm disappointed I never mentioned how in the California Adventure ad in the Toy Story 2 tape, why the hell they used a rock shaped like a wolf to advertise a California-themed park section. Like, what does it have to do with anything? Are there an abundance of stone wolves in California? Anyway, back to the VHS tape I'm supposed to be talking about. The fish then start watching the same movie we're about to watch. But they started this ad in the middle of the movie. Why is it just starting for them too all of a sudden? And don't forget to stay tuned after the movie for the music video, Part of Your World. What the hell are you talking about? This is a tape for The Little Mermaid. Isn't the music video for Part of Your World a part of the movie? Oh, it's just the song, but with clips of Jody Benson singing it on a beach in the middle of nowhere. Okay, I wish it wasn't so distorted like this for the credits. I just put them on the bottom or something. I can't even fucking read them! At least we got YouTube so we can find the scene in its original form. I don't know how they did that, but whatever. All right, that's one tape down, 50 more to go. I'm not gonna give a conclusion. It doesn't really matter. Like, what do you want me to conclude? It's a set of ads built around some creepy talking fish, talking to a fish's voice actor. Next. Okay, so the next tape I've chosen to talk about is Aladdin. The version of Aladdin I'm talking about is the Disney Classics version from 1993. There wasn't a masterpiece version for some reason. This VHS tape doesn't have any creepy fish introducing us to the ads, or even those coming soon to theaters transitions. It's just a bunch of ads just playing in a row. The first ad starts off with Disney bragging about how fucking great the Renaissance films are, you know, nothing new. Over the years, Walt Disney Studios has taken us on unforgettable journeys from under the sea in the Little Mermaid, to an enchanted castle in Beauty and the Beast, and into a whole new world with Aladdin. But then we get... Lines 
The Lion King trailer. It begins with the opening nya and the sun, but then we also get narration and behind the scenes looks. It's an extraordinary original story about a heroic young cub named Simba. Ah yes, the original story from Japan. Wait, Shakespeare isn't from Japan. It's an extraordinary original story about a heroic young cub named Simba, destined to become king of the jungle. You do know lions don't live in the jungle, right? I'm just gonna assume that you horribly mispronounced Savannah. I mean, it shares a letter. To create a cast of realistic animal characters, Disney's artists drew inspiration for their work by sketching and studying the real thing. Well, I guess these realistic animal characters weren't realistic enough for one Jonathan Favreau, and so he decided to make it even more realistic 25 years later. Some of their subjects were even invited right into the studio. Fun fact, everyone in that room died from being mauled by a lion. I guess I like the way this is presented. It looks like they just casually bring a fucking lion into their studio like it's a regular house cat. I love the way Jeffrey Katzenberg says with seven original songs by pop superstar Elton John. Oh yeah, seven original songs. Circle of Life, Can't Wait to Be King, Be Prepared, Akuna Matata, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? What the fuck? Are they lying or did they cut two whole songs out of the movie? It's probably the second one. Actually, I should probably look it up. I didn't even do that for the script. Okay, so I did some researches. There were many deleted scenes with some deleted songs in the movie. However, it raises far more questions than answers. So the trailer said there's gonna be seven original songs in The Lion King, but I counted more and less at the same time. You see, when this trailer was made, I assumed there was more songs in the movie that were eventually cut from the movie. However, there was more than two songs cut from the movie. There was four songs cut from the movie. And because of that and other reasons, that makes me very confused as to why they said seven original songs in this trailer. So there was one deleted song that was supposed to be sung by Mufasa. This is obviously a sixth song. It sounds like no other song in the movie and it was directly cut out of the movie. To be king is a daunting position. But who gives a hoot when you're hot? There's a song where Scar tries to force himself onto Nala. A king alone is a sound situation indeed but a king without heirs now that's a tragedy you can't be serious i've never been more serious bad touch bad touch stranger danger there's a deleted song i found on disney plus called warthog rhapsody don't dismiss the warthog philosophy take it from me he's got it all worked out and finally there's the lion in the moon which i can't find video of because it was cut very early on into the film's production i found out about the first two songs the mufasa one and the scar one in a youtube video these aren't on disney plus and this disney plus extra isn't in that video i don't know why I'm getting zootopia flashbacks here i don't know why disney just doesn't put all of their extras on disney plus anyway you can see the issue here there's four cut songs which brings their grand total up to nine well i mean you'd think that but that nine has a big ol' asterisk in front of it and it does not get any simpler from here you see, many of the songs cut from the movie are just different versions of songs that are already in the final movie. Scar's cut song is just Be Prepared, but with different lyrics. Be prepared for a stunning proposal That power and beauty should dawn Prepare for a glorious future Be prepared for the murkiest scam so I'm not exactly sure if they'd count this as an original song or not, considering it shares a lot of DNA with a song that's already in the movie. It'd kind of be like counting the same song twice. And in case you're wondering, despite having the exact same premise, this is a distinctly different song from The Madness of King Scar. The one from the Broadway musical and in the animation you've probably seen. Tell me I'm a dog. Get away from me! Tell me I'm a dog. Ruling ascendants, our line of descendants will flow through the pride and beyond. <laughs> this deleted song eventually turned into that song for the play, but it's a different song here. The Lion and the Moon, despite me not being able to listen to it, is described as a lullaby version of Circle of Life, and I'm not sure if the trailer would count that as an original song. In fact, the song was cut so early in production that I doubt this trailer would even count this as one of the seven anyway. And when this Warthog Rhapsody song was in the movie, I don't think Akuna Matata was there. It'd be redundant for both of these to be in the same script because they're pretty much trying to do the same thing in terms of moving the story forward. It means no worries for the rest of your days. Now if you want to roll model, I'll 
a life most blissfully led. Then look no further than Pumba here. It's our problem free philosophy. Don't dismiss the warthog philosophy. Take it from me. He's got it all worked out. Listen, kid, if you live with us, you have to eat like us. Hey, this looks like a good spot to rustle up some grub. I'm starved! Me too, what's for lunch? Glad to ask, kid. Should we tell him, Pumba? Ah! Why move mountains to get your chow when you only need to move the log? Slimy, it's satisfying. Crap. With seven original songs. My best guess is that during this stage in the movie's production, they had already cut the Lion in the Moon. Either Warthog Rhapsody or Akuna Matata are in the final movie, but not both of them. The Cut Scarf song is in this version of the movie. And they think that the Cut Scarf song is different enough from Be Prepared for it to be considered an original song, which is stupid, but this is the most logical conclusion I could find here. So my best guess is the trailer is referring to Circle of Life, the Cut Mufasa song, can't wait to be king. Be prepared. Either Akuna Matata or Warthog Rhapsody. Then the reprises of Be Prepared with different lyrics. And then finally, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Whoever wrote Seven in that narrator's script, I hate you. Academy Award-winning lyricist Tim Rice. The Lion King will take a shit. They added a shitty roar over footage of Scar talking. And he's absolutely right. It's far too dangerous. The Lion King will take you on a- Okay, and that's the end of the trailer. Well, I mean, the trailer doesn't end there, but that's all I had to say about it. What's next? 50 years ago, Walt Disney created a motion picture masterpiece. Jesus Christ, Disney, have you been doing yoga? Because only the most flexible can suck their own dick that hard. I like how there's no context given to where that mouth line on Pinocchio came from in the trailer, so it just looks like he put on a mouth twice dude pinocchio just ate shit pinocchio what happened your nose is growing no that timeless classic is on video cassette yeah it was already you, you kind of already did this would you like to be pinocchio's conscience uh-huh uh why is the fairy so realistic compared to everyone else geppetto doesn't look like that and he's also human. Also, Geppetto is a human, but there's also furries walking around. I haven't watched Pinocchio yet, so I don't know what's happening. What happened? Agreed. No family should be without the masterpiece that's touched the hearts of millions. You are a real boy. Well, what's the point if you just spoiled how the goddamn movie ends, you idiots? Pinocchio, the story of the wooden puppet who wanted to become a real boy. Touch the hearts of millions. You are a real boy. It's the last time this century you can own Walt Disney's classic, Pinocchio. Last time this century, huh? Well, this version of the movie came out in 1993, and there's another VHS re-release in 1999. Still technically within the century, get owned and get fucked. In case you're confused as to why it says it's advertising a Disney classic release, but the version I'm using as a comparison to all the other releases is a Disney masterpiece version, it's because this is in the same series. This isn't actually part of the Disney masterpiece line. They just released it twice and decided to call it that before they called their other line, the Disney Masterpiece line. I don't get it either, but this is the version of the tape that they're advertising, so all of those jokes make sense. For anyone who's ever wished upon a star. Um, dear star, I want a banana. Okay, cool. Can I watch Pinocchio now? And now, our feature presentation. Oh, so Aladdin was just two ads. Dude, that was pathetic. Only two ads? Pathetic. You're pathetic, Aladdin VHS. Go fuck yourself. You'd think I would destroy the actual tape, would you? That'd be stupid oh shit. Anyway, the next tape is The Lion King. Let's -a go. Yeet. Okay, so you remember how in the Toy Story VHS there was an ad where a baby kept trying to walk but he kept falling over and they couldn't go to Disney World until the baby could walk and then the other kid was sad and acting like a little bitch so then the family thought screw it and they took him before the baby could walk and then the baby does walk and then he gets abducted by Charles Entertainment Cheese. Cool, because there's another ad like that with children talking about Disney World and this Lion King Masterpiece Edition VHS release.
Don't ask why I'm yelling this from across the room. These two little shitheads are packing a suitcase for Disney World, and the slightly older kid is giving advice to the one that's pretty much a baby. First thing you gotta remember about Disney World is to pace yourself. You've got all these unbelievable rides and cool stuff to do. If you try to do it all at once, you'll be sleeping like a baby by lunchtime. Yeah, don't do it all at once. Then again, though, how does one do everything at Disney World at once? Seriously though, if you go to Disney, you don't have to worry about pacing yourself even if you could do everything all at once because all the lines last 50 years. All right, step two of little boy Matt Pat's epic strategy to maximizing Disney World is don't eat right before you go on Mr. Toad's wild ride. What? Apparently he said Mr. Toad, but he put an L inside so it sounds like he said Mr. Told. Mr. Toad's also, why can't I eat before going on Mr. Keegan Michael Key's wild ride? I assume you wouldn't want to eat before going on Splash Mountain or Space Mountain or the Seven Dwarves Mine Mountain, but why not Mr. Toad? I mean, you explained yourself for the last tip, but why not this one? You're forcing me to look up what Mr. Toad's wild ride is to confirm whether you're full of shit or not. Okay, so it's just a car ride that takes you through a series of events illustrated by sounds and cardboard, just like Superstar Limo or that one level from The Curse of Dreadbear. This tip sucks. Step three is- Goofy is huge. <laughs> Okay. I know he's only this big on TV. Dude, how small is your TV? Jesus Christ. But in real life, Goofy could beat up Dad. He said Goofy could beat up Dad, in case you were wondering. It took me a while to understand what he said there, like literal years. When I watched these ads as a kid, I didn't understand what he said, and it was only as I got older and noticed I had no idea what he said there that I tried deciphering it. I didn't even know he said Mr. Toad's Wild Ride until making this video and writing the script. I know it may seem kind of mean or whatever to say that this kid can't speak or to criticize him for pronouncing Toad with an L. But this ad was in 1995. He's probably in his 30s now. You think he gives a shit anymore? Well, I guess that's really important stuff. This is why children can't vote. The first thing you gotta remember about Disney World is to pace yourself. Number two, don't eat right before you go on Mr. Toad's wild ride. Number three, Goofy is huge. Well, I guess that's really important stuff. We'll be leaving in about... Three weeks. Where are your parents? Next up is the trailer for Pocahontas. Ugh. Most people don't like this movie because it's very historically inaccurate, which, you know, they're not wrong about that. One of these explorers was a man named John Smith, who was dubbed the President of Virginia and Admiral of New England. Smith claims that soon after he arrived in Virginia, he was captured by a man named Open Chanakaka. Then he was brought to Chief Wahoo Seneca, who ordered his execution. Just as his head was about to be smashed on a rock, a beautiful girl named Pocahontas comes to his rescue, begging her father for mercy. Most historians agree that this sounds completely ridiculous for so many reasons. First of all, Pocahontas would have only been nine or ten years old at the time and John Smith was 27. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. People also don't like it because they consider it offensive, which kind of pairs with the historical inaccuracy thing. And I mean like, yeah, I get that too. Pocahontas didn't look like this. However, when I first watched it when I was younger, I just thought it was boring and I didn't really take any of that into consideration because I didn't know about any of that at all. So I should probably watch the movie again just so I can update my perspective considering it was a long time ago when I first watched this. Yeah, okay, so I just watched it and I think the thing I remember the most is how three people are shot in this film and each time it's insanely obvious that they aren't actually shot. I mean, yeah, the movie pretends they are and tries to hide it because, you know, they got to get that G rating. But come on, Coco Elm is shot presumably in the stomach, lands in water, is picked up, and there isn't any blood at all. Are you serious? Yeah, okay, nothing's changed. The movie's still shit. <laughs> I didn't really care about anything that was happening. There doesn't really seem to be much character to any of these people. Like, this guy is the reason the phrase cartoonishly evil exists. And it just feels like this movie contains a really long first and second act. Like, they're about to battle because they're different from us, and that makes them bad. They're not like you and me, which means they must be evil. They're different from us, which means they can't be trusted. However, love conquers all, and, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> If you kill him, you'll have to kill me too. I love him, father. Look around you. This is where the path of hatred has brought us. This is the path I choose, father. What will yours be? From this day forward, if there is to be more killing, it will not start with me. 
The saddest thing to me about this movie is that it's just a shitly written movie, even it's divorced from the whole Pocahontas thing. Like, if this had nothing to do with Pocahontas the person, it'd still be bad. Honestly, though, I don't really care about this movie enough to go more in depth, so I'll just leave it at. It's not good, and I also don't really like it. Anyway, let's talk about the trailer, which I'm supposed to be talking about. Once I watched a Schaeferless video where he said that you should just watch Colors of the Wind on YouTube and pretend it's a short film. How do people enjoy this tone-deaf, absurdly boring piece of garbage? Just watch Colors of the Wind on YouTube and pretend it's a short film. Save yourself 81 minutes of your life that you'll never get back. The reason I bring that up is because this trailer is pretty much that. We see John Smith arrive on his boat. We see Pocahontas looking at him with three different shots that are clearly from three different points of the movie. Then she sings Colors of the Wind to him. Well, I mean, Colors of the Wind, but after the intro part. If you were to isolate this trailer and pretend it's a short film, these characters would still be hilariously different from the actual people, and they'd still be communicating with each other only without the knowledge that it's epic forest magic. But I mean, at least it sounds nice. But even then, it's kind of subjective. I mean, maybe it is. I don't know much about music. I think it sounds nice, at least. The animation is nice, much like the actual movie. Look at this cool color thing here. I think it looks very pretty, uh, um, um, in my opinion. Though, I don't know what she means by paint with all the colors of the wind, considering wind is, um, uh, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's invisible. I mean, obviously it's metaphorical, but I, I still don't know what it means. I guess I'd say it means appreciate the world. I don't think this movie has much more depth in its metaphors than that. You can own the earth and still all you'll own is earth. I think this means that if you own the earth, all you'll own is dirt until you can learn to appreciate the earth and everything in and around it. Until you can paint with all the colors. But I mean, John Smith said that they used their land for buildings and shit. It's got streets. Filled with carriages, bridges over the rivers, and buildings as tall as trees. They own their earth, but they don't literally own earth. <laughs> so maybe I don't get this one either. For a movie so blatant with everything it says, you'd think I wouldn't be stupid enough to not understand this song. I also don't know what a blue corn moon is. Have you ever heard the wolf cry to the blue Neither does anyone else because I looked it up and it's literally just something they made up for the song because it sounded cool. I find it funny how John just aims his gun at this bear for no reason. I'm probably supposed to interpret it another way, but I can't take this film seriously. Okay, I'm being horrible. There is a line in the song I don't think is that bad. I think. is good. I think this line is good because it isn't saying that there's literal money around you like the John Smith crew thinks. It's more so saying that you can find personal value from the world around you that isn't worth monetary value. Congratulations movie, there's a line in your song that makes sense. At first I also thought I think the only people who are people are the people like was an okay lyric. John Smith's crew of white folk only cared about themselves and think they're the superior race. Again, they even say that in the movie. Here's what you get when races are diverse. They're not like you and me, which, which means they must be you. And Pocahontas here is saying to John, who immediately stopped believing that as soon as he saw Pocahontas, that if you take a second to learn about people who don't look like you and think like you, you'll learn things you didn't even know you were ignorant to. But if you walk the footsteps of a stranger, you'll learn things you never knew, you never knew. And I mean, that's a fine lyric, I guess, but if you don't know something, I'm pretty sure it's standard to not know that you didn't know it. I think that the movie thinks it's being clever with that line, when in reality, it's just kind of standard. I'm John Smith. Change back! Anyway, that's all I want to say on that, really. I watched this whole movie for this segment. It wasn't worth it. But at least I know I never need to see this movie again. All right, moving on. And now, coming soon to video cassette. This is the only transition in the whole tape that's like this. Yeah, there's no coming soon to theaters transition before Pocahontas, or even another coming soon to video cassette before the next video cassette. There's this bit of text before Pocahontas, but it looks different. 
and there's no voiceover. And there's also a bit before the next movie preview that says coming to cassette for the first time. Coming to home video for the very first time. But again, there's no actual transition. I just find that really weird. Why is there only one transition like this? Anyway, tell me, what's coming soon to video cassette, Walt? Cinderella. Oh, neat. Another movie I haven't seen. I don't feel the need to watch the movie for this trailer. Fuck off! With the last one, it was a whole segment from the movie, and I needed to make sure the things I said made sense. This is just the standard ad, and this video is about ads. So what does this ad have to say about the film? The magic. The music. The masterpiece. Okay, Disney. I can only say some variation of Lamau playing with own pee-pee to symbolize narcissism and bragging enough times in a video before YouTube and my parents get mad at me. You keep making me say it, and now you're gonna get me in trouble. So go fuck yourself. Oh, wait. It's the one and only original version of the all-time favorite story. Hold on, what? It's the one and only original version of the all-time favorite story. Uh... What? I mean, I guess technically that sentence makes sense. It's the one and only original version, which means this original version of the story is the one and only version of this original version of the story. And Cinderella's probably someone's favorite fairy tale, so it's probably someone's all-time favorite story. So yeah, the sentence does make sense. I probably just would have written it in a way that's less fucking stupid. Hey, how about it's Disney's one and only take on the all-time classic fairy tale? That would have worked well, but no, you had to say a bunch of stupid shit. On the well, the spell will be broken. Goodbye! I don't even know your name. How will I find you? What the hell? Weren't you about to kiss her? You two were just about to suck on each other's lips and you didn't even swap names. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Where are Cinderella's toes? It's the original Walt Disney masterpiece, Cinderella. Ah, oh, cool. They spoiled the movie again. Dad, um, when we- Ew, what the hell? Real people. Okay, so this is an advertisement for a movie called Angels in the Outfield. Wait, what? Angels in the Outfield? Haha, <laughs> get it? Evangelion reference. I mean, there wasn't really a joke there, but you know, you probably don't care. Okay, so what I can tell, this is the plot. This kid has no family. Well, actually, he does, but they aren't a family. I don't know. Dad, um. When we gonna be a family again? So, Child asks his dad when they'll be a family again, and the response is when some baseball team wins the game. I'd say when the Angels win the pennant. What the fuck? Thing is, though, this baseball team called the Angels sucks the big ass, and the coach is pissed off because their team is full of big dumbos. So, Kid asks God to help the Angels. God. If there is a God. Kid, I don't think there's a God. Have you ever seen that PS3 <laughs> ad? Anyway, God's like, I got you, fam. And in the next few games, it's implied that the angels help out by picking them up and dragging them across bases and all that. Christopher Lloyd is here, and he's implied to be, like, the angel's communicator to the kid. The kid tries to tell the coach, but the coach thinks that the kid is the stupidest person in the known universe. Great. A psycho kid. I might have over-exaggerated that a bit. But after we see the angels helping the angels more, I guess... He, he starts believing him. So the coach goes to tell his superior about the angels for some reason. And then the superior thinks the coach is the stupidest man in the known universe. And the coach gets fired. Hardcore tears. But then coach becomes president. Child during a press conference stands up. Coach is somehow a coach again. Kid is flapping his wings. The rest of the crowd does that too because they're all paid extras. And a ball is thrown. We can assume it has happy end. That's the ad. I don't think I need to watch this movie because I'm pretty sure I just did. <laughs> it's like the trailer for Revenge of the Sith. Though maybe I shouldn't say that in confidence because I haven't watched the movie. I find it funny that the plot of this movie from the way it's presented in the trailer is that the kid gets angels to help a failing baseball team so we can have a family. That's stupid. <laughs> anyway, I was going to add this to my watch list, like unironically, but it isn't on Disney+. Plus. What the hell? Why is it on this tape if it's not a Disney movie? It said Walt Disney Home Video. Oh, well, I guess I'm not watching this shit. Such a shame, too. Who wouldn't want to watch a movie called Angels in the Outfield? What's that? Someone's at my door. I wonder who it could be. Ew, what the fuck? Okay, so it looks like someone gave me a blood-soaked copy of Angels in the Outfield. Disgusting. Okay, so it looks like I have no choice to watch this movie now, because someone gave it to me on VHS, and... Well, obviously I can watch those. I mean, sure, it's covered in blood, 
when has anything bad ever happened after someone brings a blood-soaked item into their house? Let me wash this blood off. It's totally not ketchup. Gene Chalice says it's a flat-out wonderful movie. And considering I don't know who that is, nor do I know what the Today Show is, I bet I'll have a gay old time. Well, looks like I'm gonna watch this movie. Yay. Okay, so the kid is in foster care under the protection of the pigeon lady from Home Alone 2. The kid's dad is over, and that's why the kid asks if they'll ever be a family again. The kid's mom is dead because fuck parents, am I right? And the dad can't take care of him. It's established that the kid's favorite baseball team is the Angels, despite how shitty they are, and that's why the dad says they'll be a family again when the Angels win. He doesn't expect it to happen. However, the kid, being a kid, I guess, takes what he says literally and prays to God that he helps out the team because he wants a family. Much like most other trailers, they use different takes than what's actually in the movie. God. If there is a God. God. If there is a God. I don't know why, but it's definitely something. Anyway, the kid and his foster friend, usually having to spy on the baseball game through binoculars, goes on a baseball school field trip, I guess. And that's when he sees the angels for the first time like the actual angels. Also, Christopher Lloyd shows up and tells him what's happening. Also, the coach, who is usually mad that his team sucks the big ass, is in shock that they actually didn't suck the big ass. When he does a photo shoot with the kid, the kid tells him about the angels, and he does think he's a big stupid. Though later, he does decide to bring the kid and his friend along to see if he actually sees angels. Eventually, he's convinced, and the angels go on a massive winning streak. One day, the kid has to go to a social worker court meeting thing, where it's revealed that the kid is now property of the state and not his dad which is why he cries eventually through this kid it's revealed that the coach believes in angels and his superior does almost fire him but then he's instead told to speak at a press conference to deny his beliefs however because this is a wholesome movie he speaks the truth about angels helping or whatever and people are supportive so no he doesn't become the president surprisingly enough i mean it's not like i actually believed that but still he doesn't become the president this is a press conference though anyway the angels have one big last game but the stakes are that the other angels can't help them win the game and so the kids worried about that however the angels team has also just gotten good anyway so they win <laughs> and then the kid gets a family not a family with his original dad a new family it's not like he asked for his original family he just wanted a family and when the angels won the coach adopted the kids. Yeah, oh, what a cute, satisfying ending. They're gonna live happily ever after. This trailer is indeed pretty much the movie. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but I don't understand trailers that spoil everything in the movie. Why? Why does this always happen? Why are there so many trailers that spoil the movie? Who's gonna watch it if you just spoil everything? Though I guess it worked on me, but that's only because I wanted to check if the trailer was pretty much the whole movie. And it was. <laughs> anyway, I actually ended up taking a few notes while watching this movie, so I might end up making a video about it, but no promises. I tried recording the movie off the VCR the same way I've been recording all of these ads, and for some reason the audio is really messed up on this one. The audio is out of sync with the video, and there's a line of static throughout the whole audio track, which is annoying. <laughs> What the fuck? And I could technically work with that. Every time I want to use a clip from the movie with audio, I could just resync the audio and just deal with the static. However, uh, that sounds really annoying to do every single time, and I'd rather just have a regular copy of the movie to work with that's also in HD. And again, it's not on any streaming services for whatever reason, including Disney Plus. Which is weird, considering it's a Disney movie. I mean, they put anything that even has a slight association with Disney on there. So, maybe they just forgot about this one. Okay, I'm actually curious. Did Disney not make this movie or something? Like, who made it? Okay, so it says it's made by Caravan Pictures. That's not a caravan, that's a person. So, from what I could gather in the Wikipedia article, Caravan Pictures was a movie studio created to shut out movies so Disney could meet their yearly movie quota. Okay, so what other movies have they made? My God. Well, Caravan Pictures went out of business in 1999, so I guess we know the real reason we don't have a G.I. Jane 2. Honestly, I pity anyone in the future who doesn't get that. Okay, I should probably move on for my own safety. Coming to home video for the very first time. One of the greatest Disney classics, the Aristocats. Oh, shit. You guys want to hear a funny joke my grandpa told me? No. Okay, so this family walks into a talent agency. 
Yeah, I've never really been a big fan of this movie's line work or colors. I don't know, it's just very slightly unappealing to me. They don't seem too vibrant, they just kind of seem disgusting. Why should you be first? Because I'm a lady, that's why. You're not a lady. You're nothing but a sister. Jesus, just go through the door. They've been catnapped and abandoned in the French countryside. They're gone! By a greedy butler out to steal their fortune. According to this trailer, their family's fortune consists entirely of four cats. Join an unforgettable cast of delightful Disney characters. Fun fact, I've seen this movie before a long time ago, and I don't remember most of the characters. False advertising. Place some skin on me, scat cat. Okay, what the hell? Do I just not understand English or something? What did he say there? Lace sun skin on the scat cat. What is he saying? Place some skin on me, scat cat. Okay, so he did say scat. I would say that's gross, but it's fitting for the aristocrats. The projectile shit is just flying at him. It's going all over the room. It's like spin art. It's filled with excitement. Charge! <laughs> excitement equals the biting of the ass cheek. Thanks for confirming that, Disney. It's filled with excitement. <laughs> Romance. Scandalous. Sissy stuff. Okay, cool. The aristoc... Cats are full of excitement, romance, scandalous, sissy stuff. Uh, were those last two things other stuff the movie is full of? Or were they just reacting to the romance? And music you'll be dancing to all night long. Lamau, no. Th that's, that's all I have written in the script. It's just Lamau, no. But most of all, it's... It's delightful Disney fun. They say that right before showing the racist cat. It's delightful Disney fun. Everybody wants to be your cat. Well, I wouldn't say everyone exactly. Seems like more fursuiters want to be canine. It's a jazzy addition to your Walt Disney Classics collection. No, Disney, this wasn't released under the Classics label, it was released under the Masterpiece label. Even you guys are confused over your shitty VHS release strategies. The Aristocats. And then the, the father takes a tremendous shit. Coming soon to video cassette. Okay, I guess that's it. Not just for the trailer, but also just this VHS tape in general. That's one more off the list. That one took longer than I wanted it to. So what's next? Oh, Hercules Gamer. Okay, so the first ad is one I already talked about. It's the Mulan trailer from the Little Mermaid VHS. It's the same thing. Let's move on. What's with all the lightning transitions? Okay, no, but seriously, it is slightly different. Firstly, the sound design between the trailers is different. The aspect ratio is different, and ironically, much like the Hercules trailer in the Toy Story VHS, this ad has some unfinished animation. Well, the proper name for it would probably be uncolored animation, because, you know, it's 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 still animated. I still think it's cool seeing shots from over 20-year-old movies that aren't finished yet. It's kind of like seeing construction photos for a building that's decades old. Seeing an early glimpse into this thing that's been finished for a very, very long time is interesting to me, and I'd assume many others, though I might just be really weird. Oh yeah, and this trailer also doesn't have fish talking before or after it like the Little Mermaid VHS. Actually, guess what's up next? <laughs> There was a Little Mermaid. Yeah, an ad for the Little Mermaid VHS. Before a young lion became a king. Before a beauty tamed a beast. Before Aladdin unleashed a genie. They avoided saying the names of the other characters in the other two taglines. So I thought they were going to say something like, before a street rat released a genie or something. I find it funny how this trailer makes it seem like the only reason Ariel wants to go to the surface is so she can make out with the hot guy. Have you lost your senses completely? He's a human. You're a mermaid. The is in love with a prince. That was the trailer, not me. Fun fact, if you watch the movie, you find out that's not the only reason. I don't see how a world that makes such wonderful things could be bad. I want to be where the people are. I'm ready to know what the people know. I want to see, want to see them dancing. Flipping your fins, you don't get too far. Up where they walk, 
Okay, what else is there to make fun of? Uh, they illustrate the magic of this movie, not with the shot of Ariel turning into a human, but instead they illustrate it with Flounder blowing a raspberry at the shark who tries eating him. It's all the magic. That's weird. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say. Oh, well. Coming to video in 1998? What, you mean like the year it currently is as you released this ad? <coughs> okay, what's next? Disney's Belle's Magical World. Oh, for God's sake. Hey, we got another shitty sequel, this time to Beauty and the Beast. I'd rather have a sequel to Dementia. At least it'd be more interesting and probably have better animation. What do you mean that doesn't make any sense? Fuck off. Why even show clips from the first movie if the second is only gonna look far cheaper by comparison? The least you could do is just show footage from this movie and your ad and hope that the audience forgets what good animation looks like during the fade to black between the little mermaid and this okay that's mean the animation looks okay i guess but it's just so telling how much of a downgrade this is it's so obvious that this was just some quick cheap thing made to be sold on video to make more money they even self-admit that the movie is three separate stories now bell is back in three new wonderful stories they didn't have any kind of idea for a feature-length continuation for beauty and the beast they just wanted more money and their writers probably came up with three ideas realized they didn't have to expand on any of them because they could just put it all together spend two weeks animating it and then sell it to all the children who like beauty and the beast and don't care i guess hmm well, I'm picky and children deserve better. Fuck you, Disney. It's a feature-length storybook adventure, and it's only on video. Saying something is straight to video as a selling point is like advertising that a video game is exclusive to Walmart. It's the thing that should drive people away being advertised as a good thing. Featuring all your favorite Beauty and the Beast characters and lots of exciting new friends. <laughs> yeah, like really awkward chandelier. She didn't say anything. She just hung there and did that nervous laugh you do when someone bumps into you and you're trying to play it cool. <laughs> It's enough of this shit. Next up is an ad for Peter Pan. Coming to video March 3rd, 1998. One of your favorite movies of all time. Nope, haven't seen this one either. Ask me what movies I've seen. The chances of me seeing something you name is in line with you finding a leprechaun. It's the adventure of a lifetime for some of Disney's most beloved characters. You know, I'm tempted. I really am tempted. I really want to play a clip from that one part of the movie and be like, yeah, like this part of the adventure with these characters, but you know, I won't because that's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> he stabbed him in the asshole. This spring, Disney's 14th animated classic flies onto video for 45 days only. Yeah, that's right, 45 days only. After that, it goes back into the Disney vault. It's not like we'll ever release it again or anything. When the fuck have we ever done that? Oh, well, that was a short ad. What's next? It's one of the most important discoveries ever made. A cure for cancer? A metastable compound that's highly viscous, extremely volatile, and has an unbelievable... <laughs> sense of rhythm oh it's not a cure for cancer it's a cure for happiness yeah this is really enticing me to watch this movie guys dancing snot Robin Williams. okay fine you get a point for that fun fact this movie is apparently made by a company called great oaks they also made the 101 dalmatians remake they made another robin film called jack and that's it they only made three films Anyway, I think I saw Flubber before, but I don't remember anything about it. It can't be that bad though, right? I mean, the Flubber seems really annoying and the whole rest of the movie does too, but Robin Williams is here. Robin Williams is like salt. You can put it on something good, you can put it on something bad, and either way, it's gonna make it better. Hey, at least I can add this one to my Disney Plus watch list, unlike the other one that I had to find via VHS tape. Yeah, Disney Plus movie night. We're watching Flubber. What do you mean you're breaking up with me? This one shot of Flubber shaking its ass at the camera reminds me of that one part from the Gummy Bear song where the Gummy Bear is shaking its ass at the camera. Why was the Gummy Bear's jiggling ass the first thing that came to my mind? You know, it's rude to ask such personal questions. Speaking of questions, what's next? Oh, we move on to the actual movie Hercules? Well, we can't be having that. Then we'd actually be entertained. On to the next tape. <laughs> Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> More like Lilo and 
Be Coming soon to theaters. The Jungle Book 2. Oh, for fuck's sake, a Disney sequel actually made it to theaters? What kind of sorcerer's magic is this? Well, what do people think of this movie? Oh, God. That's slower than Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Anyway, at least the animation in this doesn't look super cheap. Although, I guess this one is theatrical. That's also probably how they got John Goodman for this movie. Show me you can still fight like a bear. Although, he was also in two other Disney projects around this time, too. So, I'm starting to think they actually held his family hostage or something. Anyway, this isn't a direct to video thing, but I still don't understand why they made this one either. Like, I thought the ending of the original Jungle Book is that Mowgli is now in a place where he belongs. It was bound to happen. Mowgli is where he belongs now. In some random girl's house. The continuing story. Liar! You know what? I'm actually kind of curious about this movie. Most other sequels I couldn't really give less of a shit about, but I'm genuinely curious as to this movie's justification for existing, so I'll probably watch this at some point after watching the first one. I, uh, I only watched the ending to confirm what I showed in this video. But not right now, though. We need to talk about more bears. Barry Barrington was like any other boy. Sometimes I feel... Different. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sometimes I feel different. Dexter! <laughs> this poor kid who's also a bear is talking about how he feels different and his brother just mouths you are while his father beats him. This is what you call peak humor. Also, apparently this character's name is Barry Barrington. Barry Barrington. Their parents were feeling fucking lazy that day. Wait a minute, did this come out of her? Did she fuck a bear? Okay, fine. I'll watch this movie too to confirm or deny that. But first, let me just talk about the trailer because I, I have other things to say. Uh, then I'll watch the movie. He's run away from home. Now Barry's about to discover his destiny. Wow. The country bears! Okay, um, first question. What's happening? Okay, so this little boy slash actual fucking bear runs away from home, presumably because of dick. And then after this weird bus transition, we see he's inside a bus, and then half a second later on top of a bus, and then he finds a band full of bears called the Country Bears. I'm pretty sure this is in reference to the Country Bear Jamboree at Disney World. That, that's about it. That's all I had to say about that. Now Barry's about to discover his destiny with four guys who are barely a band. I belong here. Kid, the narrator just said that they're barely a band. Do you really want to jump on this sinking ship? Is it because they're all bears? What is a human band not good enough? That's racist. Actually, no, I take that back. I don't believe this is a race allegory. I believe this is an allegory about being gay. Because <laughs> it's a metaphor for how gay people don't feel like they belong in a world full of straight people. And then they eventually find other gay people. And, and bi people too, I guess. And, and then they rock out. Oh, what? Did you think I said it was gay because it has a bunch of bears? How fucking lazy of a comedian slash media analyst do you think I am? It's purely metaphorical. How about you start watching movies for their themes, dumbass? Wait a minute. He's a bear with human emotions and human feelings and human reactions interacting with human people. Actually, I changed my mind. This is just a furry with a bear persona finding a bunch of other furry bears who also make music. That's so much more literal and less metaphorical. How could I have missed this? Okay, scratch that. Don't watch movies for their themes. That's the dumbass thing to do. <laughs> what is this bear movie doing to my brain? Well, are you going to find him? Does he have any distinguishing marks? Yeah, he's got thick brown hair all over his body. Just say he's a bear, you idiot. You already showed him the picture. Who's that little bear? Oh, that's no little bear. That's my brother. Hey, it's just like Sing. I wanna be a singer. How did I end up with a son like you? That's my son. As in this trailer spoils the plot in almost the exact same way as Sing. Sometimes I feel different. Dexter. <laughs> Who's that little bear? Oh, that's no little bear. That's my brother! Yeah, can we please stop? I can only say the same thing so many times before it gets annoying, including saying that I've been saying the same thing over and over again in this video. Maybe I should have kept this to individual videos. Oh wait, no time to think about that. This bear just ate shit. <clears throat> They used the same stock crowd gasp as that Toy Story interactive storybook ad. Coming soon to own on Disney DVD and video. Is this one also on Disney Plus? Oh, hell yeah. Okay, I watched the movie. Uh, I wouldn't say I hated it, but I also wouldn't say it's a good movie. 
uh, it's, it's kind of a piece of shit. But I did discover some very valuable info. First of all, the kid is adopted, luckily. Am I adopted? <laughs> of course not, honey. It's your fish. Um, why would you think that, Barry? This is my baby picture. This is yours. See this? This is my birth certificate. Here's yours. That's the day mom and dad got you. What do you mean? got me. I mean, picked you up, man. You were left alone. So yeah, the mom did not birth nor fuck a bear. I, I, don't, I don't think I actually believed that, but you know, it's nice to have confirmation. Do you know the bears made the only country song ever to be recorded in Polish? Wow, really? And did you know that nobody cares? <laughs> also, this part where the bear eats shit, he doesn't actually eat shit that was edited for the trailer. Uh, I don't, I don't know why. It's st stupid. This trailer lied to me, and I demand my money back. I never spent any money. That joke doesn't make sense. Hey, wait a minute. I just realized that I talked about a movie where bears play in a band, and they're also probably made out of animatronic helmet suits, considering the non-CG look of the bears. And I didn't even mention Five Nights at Freddy's. What's wrong with me? I'm supposed to pick the lowest of low-hanging fruits. All right, let's see what kind of joke I can make here. <laughs> Freddy Fazbear 2. Okay, moving on, we got another sequel. Pog. And by Pog, I mean not Pog. Can't wait to see how well that sentence ages. Hey, you wanna know what rhymes with Pog? Dog. Hell yeah, I'm a gamer. Okay, so this is 101 Dalmatians 2, Patches London Adventure. Yeah, the sequel to 101 Dalmatians is about how there's one Dalmatian who wants to be special because he's one of 101. Patch felt lost in a sea of spots until he learned what it takes to become a one-of-a-kind hero. Wow, one-of-a-kind. I imagine these dogs are constantly fighting over which one is considered the one in the 101. I find it funny how that's the plot you're gonna go with for the sequel released like 40 years after the original movie. One of the Dalmatians in this family has a story. Shouldn't there be 101 more stories then? The other Dalmatians can't be that fucking boring, right? Wait a minute, I'm encouraging Disney to make more of this shit. Sorry if I sound a bit different. I just cut out 10 minutes to be vomiting all over my desk. I find it funny how the sequel for 101 Dalmatians isn't 102 Dalmatians. Wait, what the fuck? Okay, so they made 101 Dalmatians 2, and they made 102 Dalmatians, but that's the sequel to the remake of 101 Dalmatians, which is a remake of a movie that's already a remake of a book. And this remake is different than the reimagining of the character Cruella the Vil in the film Cruella, which is getting its own sequel. And by the way, the original movie spells 101 as the actual word 101, which first of all isn't correct, it's just 101. But on top of that, 101 Dalmatians 2 is called 101 one Dalmatians, like the number, and the remake also uses the number in its title, so this must actually be an animated sequel to the remake, which also has a live action sequel, and then there's Dalmatians- Hey, wait a minute, I was talking about a trailer, right? I should probably get back to that at some point in my life. What's interesting to note here is that the animation is a lot better than some of the other Disney sequels, like Pocahontas. It seems a lot less choppy and stilted, and seems more vibrant in terms of movement and color. They seem to handle multiple angles of the characters a lot better, too. Might have something to do with this being digitally animated. I mean, it's probably digitally animated. This was 2003. Do you think I'm one of a kind, or just one of a hundred and one? Oh, okay, cool. The dad just told us Katie doesn't matter. Actually, wait, is that verbal abuse? Is the dad an abuser? Is that a spot in his eye or something else? Wow, one of a kind. It's a one-of-a-kind movie. I was gonna make fun of Disney for calling itself really good again, but instead I'm more pressed to say, oh, Jesus Christ, no. This shit isn't one-of-a-kind, it's a dime a dozen. Fuck off. Coming soon to Disney DVD and video. For some reason, they separate DVD and video. As if DVDs aren't video. Like, I know when they say video, that means VHS, but why not call it VHS? Bruh. Or video Bruh. cassette. Is it in an attempt to make it sound less old? DVDs are also videos. Okay, yeah, that's it. That's all I had to say about this crap. I swear, if the next ad is another sequel, I'm gonna. Disney's Inspector Gadget 2. Are you fucking kidding me? Who wanted an Inspector Gadget sequel? They didn't even get Matthew Broderick back. Who is this, Normie? French Stewart. 
French. Uh, Inspector Gadget is a movie that many people see as a shithole of a film. So why would you make a direct-to-video sequel? Let me take a guess. Inspector Gadget did well, didn't it? And because movie studios don't give two fucks about quality, they probably made a sequel so they can make more. <laughs> okay, so it made over $130 million but on a budget of $90 million, meaning it wasn't actually that successful at all. Where did this thing come from? It's up to the ultimate fighting tool to save the day. Not the same one from the first movie though, that would cost too much money. But this time, there's a girl. Wowzers. If you say so. Uncle Gadget, this might be a trap. I'm thinking that this might be a trap. Men, am I right? Now. Oh damn, an epic tooling up montage. Let's dissect what we're looking at. We see him flipping on his fedora. <laughs> Excellent start. Putting on his trench coat, hopefully for the right reasons. Inspector Gadget 2 is a person. Robot. I don't know. She's oiling her arms for some reason. There's a shot of her putting on a boot. Inspector Gadget is training himself for Wii Sports Boxing. Other Inspector Gadget is preparing the nukes. He tightens her belt. Then there's two zoom outs of the same shot because apparently one just wasn't enough. Wow, that was so cool. Let's go! You know, considering how much effort they're putting into this live action movie to look like a cartoon, and considering the original property is a cartoon, you'd think that they should have just put their focus into making their movie a cartoon. Also, what's happening here? Attempted abuse? What's happening here? Self swirly? Why is there baking in this movie? Were they fucking baked when they made this shit? Disney's Inspector Gadget 2. That says Ig 2. What are you talking about? I like how in this shot they tried to make it look like the car is going so fast that their mouse skin is being flung back, but they're real people, so it just looks awkward. Okay, next up we have an ad for a Lilo and Stitch thing. We now know that Stitch is experiment 626, but whatever happened to the other 625? That sounds like the intro to a film theory episode. Okay, so it tells us that Stitch is experiment 626, but they don't show anything from this movie, nor even tell us what it's called. The adventures of Stitch continue in an all-new movie, premiering on DVD and video, summer 2003. Like, there's a CGI hallway that takes us to a DNA egg but all the footage of stitch is reused from lilo and stitch they have nothing to show and thus i have nothing to say what do you think it's gonna be like oh great more children excited to go to disney world okay guys back to bed we're too excited to sleep have they never heard of the fucking mcdonald's play place just go there i just noticed too that these ads for disney world have little titles in the corner and the one from toy story it's called walking into the hands of strangers, yeah. And the Lion King is called Voice of Experience, which I completely forgot was the point of that ad. And this one's called Anticipation. Yeah, I'd say that word actually describes Disney World well. You see, you're anticipating getting out of the- I don't really get the point of these names. Maybe giving them names technically makes some short films, thus Disney saves money on taxes or something. Anyway, so this kid walks into his sister's room to talk about how they'll probably have fun at Disney World. They don't talk about what they might experience, like falling down a big water mountain or trying to figure out how fast pass works. They just say, yeah, mom says it'll be cool. Mom says there's even more magical stuff now. Then their mom comes in asking which one of them doesn't know how to flush the toilet after they've had a shit. Then you get some shots of epic Disney World stuff like roller coasters becoming drinks and looking at duck asses. And they walk like they're crapping down their pants. And then the parents start talking about Disney because they're man children and woman children. You sleep? No, I'm too excited. I heard that. Lamal, grow up, dorks. Now available on CD and cassette. For some reason, this transition thing with the cool aesthetics I like came back after not being in front of the other ads for some reason. It was in front of the first ad and then the second. It wasn't before the third for some reason, nor the fourth nor the fifth. I suppose I understand not having a transition for the Disney World thing, though there still could have been one there too. Maybe it could have said, and now a message from Disney. But I don't understand why there aren't transitions before the other ones. Anyway, this is a transition telling us that we're about to see some tune advertisements. Apparently, they also still used musical cassette tapes in the 2000s. Well, I mean, they weren't using cassettes. They were using LimeWire, but you know, the option was still there. Anyway, this is just an ad for the Lilo and Stitch soundtrack. I always wondered how those worked. Are the licensing fees really that low for studios that it's worth it to sell a soundtrack for this movie? You know, this movie full of Elvis music. They also highlight this Island Favorites soundtrack, which contains 
More songs? The new Island Favorites album with more Hawaiian themed tunes. What the hell's the point of this? Then there's a DVD read along, which. What? And the DVD read along featuring stories, songs, and vocabulary. So it's like a storybook English vocabulary tool, or more likely a Hawaiian vocabulary tool. And also a soundtrack. What the hell's the point of this? This transition said this stuff was for CD and cassette. Did this story come to either? No, it's a DVD. Now available on. <laughs> At least they were telling the truth about that cassette thing, though. I'm sure those eight people really appreciated their Lilo and Stitch cassette tapes. <laughs> and that's it. That's the end of my VHS variety hour, give or take. It's not exactly 60 minutes, but if you care about that, stop it and shut up, bitch. I covered five whole VHS openings. A nice. Odd number. Yeah, I don't really have an actual conclusion to give here. Like I said earlier, there isn't anything really to conclude. I just watched a bunch of ads. Though, despite there being no conclusion to this video, there's still just one more thing that needs to be done. Something I forgot in my Toy Story 2 video. Something I've skipped for the other tapes in this video. And something I've been saving until now to unleash. Ladies, gentlemen, and they, I present to you... Six. Honestly, I always thought this logo was cool, but apparently many people found it scary. It even has a spot on the scary logos wiki, which I just found out existed. Honestly though, what the hell is this supposed to be anyway? What is THX and what do they do? Okay, so THX is a quality assurance company. So essentially what this means is that George Lucas, the founder of THX, approves of this tape's audio quality or something. Yes, I'm sure all of the children who shat their pants consistently to this logo appreciate the sound and visual quality of this video cassette tape. Ah yes, top of the line. Thank you so much, George Lucas.